Okay, let's move on to the politics of this, mm. the most fun one. <laughs> um, so, how do Americans feel about abortion? Uh, this is one which is going to disappoint a lot of my friends who are on the right. Let's put this up there on the screen. Public opinion on abortion has basically remained static since 1995, like I was talking about there uh, back in the safe, legal, and rare case. Pretty interesting. So, right here, in 1995, when this was taken, 60% of Americans said that they thought abortion should be legal in all or most cases. And in 2021, the last time that Pew did its extensive data, 59% said that abortion should be legal in all or most cases. Actually, the low point for abortion in this country was 2009, when Americans said 47% that abortion should be legal in all or most cases. I'm not exactly sure what was going on in 2009 or why exactly that would have changed, but it's not 2009, so there you go. Obama is the party, I don't know. Yeah, I guess it could have been that. I, I truly have absolutely no idea. Now, in terms of views on abortion, how do most people feel whenever it comes to the trimester period? Because that really is where public opinion bifurcates completely. So people who think that abortion should be legal in all cases, 25%. People who think that abortion should be legal in most cases, 34%. People who think that should abortion should be illegal in most cases, 26%. People who think that abortion should be illegal in all cases, and of course, that is the rape, incest, life of the mother situation, 13%. Don't know, don't have an opinion, 2%. Wow, abortion really is one of those. People know where they stand, apparently. Everybody knows exactly where they well, feel. Yeah, I do want to just pause you on that because I do think it is worth noting that of all of those positions across the spectrum that you just laid out, the least popular stance is illegal in all cases, right. only 13%. That's like lower than defund the police level of support. Right. And that is, in fact, going to be uh, the law in quite a number of states as we just went over. So that's why, you know, and, and especially when you ask people how they feel about Roe specifically being overturned, the latest poll that I saw, again, it was very lopsided, 70% wanted Roe to remain in place and only 30% mm -hmm. wanted it overturned. In general, my sort of like grand view of cultural issues like abortion is that whichever party seems to be in the most extreme position is the party that's losing. Yeah. And that's why I think you see the, you know, the little bit of ebbs and flows that you see in terms of where people stand on abortion, I think depends on those same swings in terms of what party is advocating for what. So now you have you know, Republicans who are very responsive to the furthest right voices on this issue because those are the people who are most activated on the issue. Well, you know, the, they're single issue voters. They're single true. issue yeah. voters. This is their thing. They're very organized. They're very activated on it. And so you have Republican elected officials who are very responsive to the furthest, hardest right views on this particular issue, that has led them to be out of step with populations, even in conservative states. I think it was Mississippi that tried uh, by ballot initiative to pass a fetal heartbeat law that got rejected even in a state as red as Mississippi. Of course, we had, you know, Todd Akin and his comments about legitimate rape in Missouri, causing him to go down to a very unpopular Claire McCaskill at the time. So now you're going to have actually more pressure on Republicans to, you know, from this activist base to, okay, time to pass the law, time to make this the law in the state, if not the entire country. And that, again, is going to put them in a very extreme place, siding with 13% of the country that believe it should be illegal in all cases uh, versus the, the overwhelming majority opinion right. that says at least there should be a, some exceptions here. So I actually have the polling here on Roe versus Wade. And uh, actually, this is one of the only cases where uh, support has gone up for do not overturn. So in August of 1992, 60% said that do not overturn Roe. 34% said yes. 62 in January of 03. January 13 remained static. But you saw a big jump in December of 2016. 69% yes. 28% say overturn. Now, it is 70%, this is August of 2019, so roughly approximate to where we are right now. Do not overturn Roe versus Wade at 70%. Yes, overturn Roe versus Wade at 28%. And the divide amongst Republicans is very real. So, and I wanna spend some time here. Yeah. So, total, people say that 61, this is the divide amongst 
Republicans in views of legal abortion. Illegal in all or most cases, 38%. Legal in all or most cases, 61%. Now, amongst people who are Republican, 62% of Republicans say that it should be illegal in all or most cases, but 36% think it should be legal in all or most cases. Now, if people who identify as conservative, it's 77% illegal, 22% legal. Amongst moderate or liberal Republican, I don't know who would call this a liberal Republican, but whatever, 44% uh, illegal, 57% legal in all or most cases. Now, amongst Democrats, it's not nearly a split. 17% of Democrats say that it should be illegal in all or most cases and legal in most cases. C amongst conservative or moderate identified Democrats, it's 25% illegal, 75% legal. And amongst liberal Democrats, it's 991. So there's actually much bigger of a split within the Republican Party. And this is what I alluded to uh, previously when I was describing my own views. I consider myself like a barstool conservative type. I'm very against political correctness. I'm very against some of these new you know, culture war things that are happening with critical race theory and trans ideology, those are frankly just as unpopular as abor banning abortion in all or most cases. Now you are going to see a big split amongst those people, Crystal. So what I was describing to you is that one third of Republicans, especially one third of people who voted for Donald Trump, consider themselves pro-choice. Now, they didn't care because Trump was ultimately against political correctness. And if you see also, we actually had a segment today we were gonna do before all of this uh, happened about how Republicans are leading amongst Latinos and amongst, I think it was parents under the age of- parents, parents with young kids. Parents with young kids, it was like 60%, something. something like that. Again, I would describe to the CRT and the trans debates. But uh, when it comes to abortion, it's literally the opposite um, in terms of how that polling. And by putting this front and center as that, I do think this is going to be uh, the one thing that could possibly change the outcome of the midterm elections. Now, there is evidence possibly against my hypothesis. We saw that the Texas law did not ultimately change that much. Governor Abbott is sailing to re-election. Now, Governor Yunkin here in, oh, not, well, not in Virginia, but in Virginia, well, they ran a lot of ads against him saying he's gonna overturn abortion if Roe versus Wade. That didn't ultimately happen. But Governor Newsom mm -hmm. did run on it, and he ultimately beat the odds on the recall election. Not beat the odds, he beat I think is relatively the same his, margin. His polls skyrocketed. Right, his polls after skyrocketed. After the Texas law passed. After the Texas and law. And it ended up not being close whatsoever. Right, so what do you make of that? I ha literally have no idea. It was all been hypothetical. There are two sides of it. Personally, I think now that it's real and people have to really decide, and if it legitimately is on the ballot, I think this is gonna hurt the Republican Party. Uh, I think red states will get a lot redder. A lot of the evangelicals are gonna get a lot more excited, but places like Pennsylvania, places like Georgia, places uh, like Florida, well, Florida may, is probably a little bit different, but. Uh, let's say the industrial Midwest and elsewhere where the barstool contingent is actually a lot higher. A lot of the people supporting the Republican Party are doing more so for cultural reasons outside of guns and abortion. That is going to have, I, I believe, a significant impact on their electoral chances come uh, November. Yes. Could be some, could, could, I could be completely wrong. Well, so we'll see. I think, you know, you have said for a while yeah. that the one thing that could upend the current, you know, destruction of the Democratic Party that we were headed towards for the midterms would be that decision. Yeah. Now that doesn't that doesn't mean it's going to play out that way, but it is that much of a sort of monumental pivot point in terms of the American political landscape that you could have it see it having um massive impacts, especially because you have uh, a Democratic base that has been completely apathetic. I mean, disappointed in Biden on almost every level. His economic agenda completely bogged down. You know, you pointed to um, trans issues and CRT with parents. I would point to the fact that you gave people a child tax credit and then you took it away after a year, which we saw there was a huge drop yeah. in terms of support from parents who were receiving the CTC once that ultimately went away. Um, you have inflation. You have I mean, there's manifest many issues in which Democrats feel very disappointed in the failure of this administration to live up to their basic promises. Now, I think you are going to continue to see a lot of frustration among the Democratic base, especially the part of the Democratic base that cares most about the issue of abortion uh, rights, that says, where have you all been? You know, we knew that this was a possibility. Mm -hmm. And I, I do want to make the point that you know, 
Obama had a supermajority. The Biden administration has control of the presidency, the Senate, and the House. If they got rid of the filibuster, they could enshrine abortion rights in law right now. Um, it did not have to be left to this group of justices. And so as someone who uh, is very upset with this decision and really abhors it, I'm equally, I almost... Like, I expect it from, this is what I expect Amy Coney Barrett and Brett Kavanaugh and co. to ultimately do. Um, the Democrats who claim to support these rights have had years and years and years to codify it into law and protect against the whims of an unelected, unaccountable Supreme Court, and they haven't done it. So I think that's very, very important to note. And I also want to say, because I mentioned earlier that this is maybe the most central issue and a determining issue of why Trump got elected in 2016 when he puts out the list of Supreme Court justices and that shores up the evangelical base. That was a huge turning point. You know, Hillary Clinton was at the Met Gala last night at the Gilded Age-themed Met Gala last night, wearing her red ball gown yeah. with the names of, like, suffragettes and other women who right. inspire her. <laughs> I don't know how she escapes any scrutin scrutiny and criticism from people who would be upset about this decision when she is the most proximate cause of the reason why we have these justices on the court. I mean, she ran a terrible campaign, not to mention her DNC allies who rigged the primary to put this terrible candidate as the you know standard bearer of the Democratic Party. So I think you also have to look at the Democratic leaders who have had every opportunity to shore up this right, which is important to not just their base, but a lot of people across the political spectrum, and they have made every excuse in the book ultimately not to act. So make sure you direct some of your ire today, if you are on the side of this issue that I am, at those failures across many years. Well, there's also uh, one Ruth Bader Ginsburg who, who deserves a lot of scrutiny here, you which know, I've always enjoyed. And there are this town is RBG Central. Literally where I used to live, there were RBG posters everywhere. Every liberal girl's got the RBG sweatshirt, bobblehead, mug. Some of them name their dogs and cats off Ruth. Listen, if you want to blame a single individual for this, uh, who had agency over that, it's Ruth Bader Ginsburg. I mean, she is the person who refused to retire under Obama, and everybody was yes queening her at the time because she wanted to be retire under Hillary Clinton, and then she ultimately died under Donald Trump, and it's her seat which ultimately was the deciding vote right. in this order to a, overturn abortion. This looks to be a five-four decision. Yeah, exactly. One so vote. The you're other welcome, way. RBG. You know, like I mean, seriously, like anybody mm -hmm. who is real about this needs to reconcile themselves with the fact that RBG's narcissism is the reason that this is happening. If you are on that side yeah. of the issue, which is a little bit of a narrative violation, which I kind of enjoy. Yeah. Well, and I mean, listen, we don't love to speak ill right. of the dead, but those are just the facts. That she's one, a public figure. Yeah. Come that on. one. You know? dis well, and yeah. I obviously yeah. have or was spoken ill of yeah. the dead. When yeah. You have to be honest about yeah. people, whether they're alive or dead. And the honest fact of the matter is that if she makes a different choice, which many activists were encouraging her to do this decision goes in a different way and you likely have the continued sort of steady erosion. I do want to say, I feel like some of the conservative outrage at the fact of the leak mm -hmm. versus the the focus, you know, there's more of a focus on that from the right than on the substance of the decision, I think, in certain ways in terms of their, their outrage. I think that's a little bit telling because if they felt like this was ultimately just an unambiguous great thing for them, then they'd be kind of cool with the leak. Like, for example, if Obergefell, um, which, you know, guaranteed the right to same-sex marriage, if that had been leaked ahead of time, I don't think liberals would have been like, you know, apoplectic about the leak. They would have just been excited about the decision. So I do think it is a little bit of a tell that they also see this as probably very politically difficult for them. And the other piece that I'm frankly just not sure how it plays out is the uh, organized effort among the evangelical right base to get justices on the Supreme Court to effectuate this particular outcome has been a central organizing principle of Republican politics for decades now. As I said, very significant contributor, if not the most significant contrib contributor to Donald Trump ultimately getting elected. And so when you lose that animating factor, 
you know, maybe it doesn't really change anything because now you still have the, well, we got to keep our people on there because we don't want it to, you know, go back the other way or we got to make sure to elect Republicans in the legislature so they can enshrine this in law. Um, but, you know, it's also possible that uh, this is, which has been so animating, effectively being taken off the table for now, could also have a deflating impact on some of the animating politics of the Republican base ultimately. I don't know which way that goes, but it's going to be interesting to see how that ultimately all shakes out, Sagar. There's no way to know. Like I said, I grew up around a lot of these people, a lot of these evangelicals. This is all they care about. This is all they've ever cared about. Here in the Northeast, we've got like the Catholic mom contingent. A lot of those people will crawl over broken glass in order to make Make sure that abortion gets overturned. So I don't know uh, whether they're going to continue to come out and vote. If I had to guess, they're probably going to come out in big droves in order to support Trump because he can run on I'm the guy who got it done. Pretty big, you know, incentive. But in the long run for organizing, for the church's support um, and the infrastructure that they've always given the socially conservative branch of the Republican Party, honestly, I really don't know. I, it's going to be interesting to me there's, it's possible that a human rights campaign phenomenon will happen. Like, you know, the human rights campaign here in D.C., they had all this money uh, ahead of Obergefell. And then when it fell, they're like, well, now what do we do? <laughs> like, you know, so now they're all in on trans and all this other stuff may become dramatically more unpopular. But at the time, they had a real animating principle and they were a central force in our American politics. I mean, you'll remember oh, yeah. in the 2009 and 2010, I mean, they were huge yes. in terms of their condition. Don't ask, don't tell, right. gay oh, marriage. Oh my God. Yes. I mean, and now, you know, the Family Research Council, some of these evangelical concerned women of America, these are titanic forces on the right uh, in terms of their endorsement power and more. It's possible that they lose. So they'll probably all pivot to, you know, CRT or gender ideology, possibly, but that's just, it doesn't have the same juice. No, and, for it's, and a those lot are very the, ephemeral issues. Like, well, I mean, I mean, I mean, it's also got, not their lane, you know, but, it's not right. religious. So, I mean, they got sort of spun up overnight and they could be replaced by some other moral panic or outrage in, in three days. But yeah, I think there's a couple things here. I mean, the, another story we were going to cover <laughs> before yeah. this happened was the fact that Biden and the Democrats are like, I guess we're going to run on Trump again in the yeah, terms right. and we'll just like try to make it about Trump again, even though we had the Glenn Youngkin race and we know this isn't really working mm -hmm. for us anymore. I guess that's what we're going to do. And they were actually kind of like secretly glad that Elon Musk might let Trump back on Twitter because <laughs> they, they view it the back. way we do. Of like, <laughs> yeah. oh, good. We get this obnoxious asshole back that we get to point <laughs> to every single day. Well, I think that thinking is all now completely off the table. This is going to be the midterm strategy for Democrats, and it's a potent one. I mean, in terms of motivating Democrats to come out and, and vote, in terms of where independents stand on the issue, and this is an issue where independents are very much more aligned with um, with keeping Roe in place than with overturning Roe. I mean, tend to be you know sort of in the center, and again, Republicans have placed themselves now in the camp of of the most extreme view on the issue. So this is going to be potent, and it also does um, give, uh, there is, I think, a, a genuine case that you can make that this does endanger things like Obergefell, because it does undercut some of the legal rationale and reasoning there. You do have Republicans, you know, sort of, yeah, they want to talk about trans issues, but there's also this whole effort to paint, you know, any gay teachers and whatever as groomers and the whole groomer discourse. So I don't think it's insane for Democrats to look and liberals to look at this decision and say, you know, some of these things that we thought were settled may not be so settled when we have a court that is clearly very activist, doesn't really care about precedent, even longstanding precedent, and is willing to cater to a conservative base, even when that means completely upending American politics. The other thing I'll say in terms of political impact is I think you're going to have a new group of voters who were not necessarily Bernie Sanders people who are completely disgusted with the failures of the Democratic Party. Mm, I think you'll have a lot of, um, like you know, EMC, lib liberal women, women yeah. who were maybe like Elizabeth Warren type yeah, yeah, yeah. people. These are peak. Yeah. I mean, if, if you ever wanted to point clearly on a cultural issue to the utter failure of the Democratic Party across years and years, like here it is. Because again, like I said, Obama had a super majority. Okay, Biden, who who has talked about enshrining, you know, Roe in law effectively at the federal law, federal level, which you could do, has done nothing on it. Has not been interested in getting rid of the filibuster or even, you know, changing or amending the filibuster. And so I think this is going to be a very compelling case 
for a group of voters who has been just sort of like vote blue no matter who, that the Democratic Party has failed in some really clear and really manifest ways. And that that ultimately, even though, again, in the midterms, I think this will probably serve the Democratic Party and galvanize a, a base that has been extraordinarily apathetic, give them an issue to run on that where they are in the clear majority, I do think overall for the Democratic establishment, this lays very bare how how just absurdly pathetic they have been in terms of standing for and protecting the things that they claim to care about and that they run on every election cycle. Yeah, I think that's fair. I just want to say one thing, which yeah. is that in the decision, Alito actually does say Obergefell is protected law. So I, I think it's scary. You can say he's lying if you want to. I'm just, you know, but I don't think there is any well, current political constituency to overturn Obergefell. 55% of Republicans support the decision. There is not even close to the same level of evangelical like, yeah, but we outrage just pointed, we just pointed out yeah. that you know, this is even goes against a significant portion of the Republican base. Yeah, so I don't put right. it completely right. off the table. I do. I think it's going to happen tomorrow. No, but do I put it completely off the table? No, because I think you do have a court that is, you know, quite activist and quite unconcerned with past. Prospects. I could be wrong. Uh, I don't think that that's the next battle of the culture. However, uh, the other issue uh, which you mentioned, which is important, is on the Democratic row. So I actually went ahead and pulled. So in for the first time. Uh, this year, actually, the Senate voted on Roe versus Wade. And there was an argument I saw advanced by Senator Sanders that they should break the filibuster. But by my count, the Democrats do not have the vote. So this was February 28, 2022. There were 46 yeas in order to protect Roe, 48 nays, and six not voting. Now, the people who were not voting, notably Raphael Warnock, so he's come out on the record as pro-choice. Mm. Obviously, it would be a tough vote for him um, in Georgia. Another one is Senator Paul in Kentucky. I believe he is pro-life. Another one was Senator Lujan. New Mexico. He was, uh, I believe he was ill at the time. But here is one which was interesting. Senator Kennedy of Louisiana, but <laughs> most importantly, was Senator Casey actually out of uh, Pennsylvania. So apparently, or and yeah, and then Joe Manchin as well in terms of uh, voting nay on that decision. So those different senators and how but they fall. Right, go ahead. You go have, ahead. Um, do you have, where are Collins and Murkowski on that count? Right, so okay, let's go ahead. Because you do ahead. have, Collins, it's easy to forget, you do have a couple. Collins of, was a nay um, on that vote. And then let me see here, Murkowski was also a nay. So uh, you do have vote. a couple of right. Republicans who, you know, let's That's say. a good point though. Because Manchin yeah. says he's, pro-life, right, right. Um, he would probably, you know, vote against Roe being codified in federal law. But uh, Collins and Murkowski at least claim to be pro-choice. Mm -hmm. And by the way, you know, Collins famously said that she didn't think Brett Kavanaugh would overturn Roe versus Wade. Okay, how did that work out for you? Like, that was clearly- <laughs> I think was that not, was a pre-election Clearly not the, uh, not the case. It was definitely a pre-election move. In the um, but so I think, you know, if you lost a couple Democrats, there might yeah. be a couple Republicans you could ultimately pick up. And then the other side of this is if Republicans do take control of Congress, and I think we have um, C3 that we can put up here, this Forbes tear sheet. There is uh, an organized effort to try to push a law that would ban abortion nationwide if Supreme Court it overturns Roe versus Wade. You've got leading anti-abortion groups and their allies in Congress meeting behind the scenes to plan a national strategy that would kick in if the Supreme Court rolls back abortion rights this summer, including a push for a strict nationwide ban on the procedure if Republicans retake power in Washington. Now, I don't know whether you have, uh, first of all, I would say, as I said before, the Republican Party, very responsive to this group of activists because they're very mm -hmm. organized, because they're single issue voters, um, because they're very much like, you know, they're very much a part, uh, a core part of the Republican activist base. And so even in states where something like this would be pretty unpopular, you're going to see senators who back it and members of Congress who back it because of their responsiveness to that, you know, more extreme views of the Republican base on this issue. Now, do I think it ultimately would have enough votes? I don't know. No, but in terms of the politics for the midterms, it really doesn't matter because there's a very- yeah, You can run on it. You can, right. it's a, you can, there's everything you need here to make a very credible case that they would want to head in this direction. So, you know, Democrats can say to voters in California, New York, other states, blue states, where, you know, these laws aren't going to be impacted by Roe versus Wade being overturned, like, 
you know, you shouldn't feel so safe here ultimately because Republicans are not content with just half of the states having abortion effectively banned or extremely severely restricted. They're actually coming for the whole thing. And um, these, I also think these senators and members of Congress will be under tremendous pressure from the activist evangelical oh, yeah, right to pass a measure such as this because now it's like, okay, Supreme Court has done their part. Where are you on this issue that you've been telling us mm -hmm. is core to your belief system for years? So they will be under pressure to pass and codify something like a nationwide ban. Don't underestimate the Catholic Church either. They're going to go full bore on this one. They have a lot of power here in Washington and over a lot of the Northeastern you know, Republican uh, types as well. So, yeah, look, I think the TLDR from this whole segment is, is going to change politics forever. Uh, this is the one thing that could possibly rescue the Democrats. It will scramble a lot of the way that we talk and we debate for for a long time. Like you said, it could activate uh, the PMC uh, kind of liberal contingent um, in, in, in against the Democratic Party, which definitely could be interesting. Uh, it could also change the way that Biden and the Democrats and uh, Chuck Schumer run the Senate. Uh, it's going to change possibly the way that they'll try and get something through the House. So buckle up. Get ready, it's a whole new era. Cable news is ripping us apart, dividing the country, making it impossible to function as a society, and making it impossible to know just what is true and what is false. But the good news is they are failing and they know it. That is why we're building something new, a new mainstream, a healthier one, something more trustworthy, something that we are going to need in one of the most pivotal times in American history. We are building up here for the midterms, for the upcoming presidential election, but we need your help. So if you can help us out by becoming a premium member today at breakingpoints.com, we're trying to change America for the better and the entire world. So what are you waiting for, guys? Go to breakingpoints.com and sign up and help us build a new mainstream.